in my notes here I said okay developer certificate release ready version check upload to your account get rich okay those are the things coming up here so we need to spend some time about here uploading to your account now that assumes you've created the account so in general uh, for our class create a free account at Amazon to distribute your apps either free or paid so you can sell your apps 99 cents 299 1099 whatever you want you can give them away for free um, this is as opposed to Google or Apple stores where over at Google you have to pay I believe it's twenty nine dollars or maybe twenty seven let's say twenty nine one time fee of twenty nine dollars <clears throat> to be able to create your account to sell on Google Play uh, Apple you have to pay ninety nine dollars per year to give away or sell your apps so for this class we're going to use Amazon and uh, you should have created an account then at developer.amazon we're going to log into it now so in your web browser if you haven't done so yet developer.amazon.com one thing that I notice is that once you log in and if you kinda like don't click on things and be active it'll log you out like in two minutes so usually when I'm talking and talking through all of this and I'm doing my thing and then I click save or whatever it says you've logged out so don't be surprised if that happens to you that it's just like it logs you out like in one minute so I'm gonna sign in and I created this account previously all you needed to do over the weekend or during the break was to create the account and um, the problem here about verification needed okay I forgot about this I'm not gonna be able to verify this because this is a completely fake account uh, so how can I fake it um, maybe okay I'll do it like this I will very quickly create a brand new account this is the problem with creating it fake because then it needs to be verified perhaps and I cannot verify it so one moment The point of what uh, what we're going to do in the developer account is to uh, create a listing for our product and sell our product. Okay, so once you've logged into your account, you see a portal to, here we go, so you see um, any notifications, has your app been rejected, uh, have you made money off of it, etc. You're going to see announcements about various features that Amazon gives you access to. This is the dashboard. Well, when you sign into this developer's console, we've got up at the top where we're going to go to apps and services. <clears throat> I have currently zero apps. So all you needed to do was to create the account and now we'll actually use it. Uh, on the bottom right corner, we have add new app. Now, if you click on the button add new app, it says, are you going to upload an Android app? a mobile web app or an app for PCs and Macs technically via Visual Studio and Cordova we have the ability to create any one of these types of apps we've been focusing on Android apps however but we can make our version of our app a full desktop app a full downloadable and installable app for devices like a desktops and laptops and Macs 
But here, obviously, then, we're going to focus on Android. Click Next. New App Submission. Now, there's going to be several different screens, and a lot of them are optional. So I'm going to point out the ones that are important to us. But of course, here first, the name of our app. I'm going to recommend to type your last name, CBDB. I believe I've previously shown the examples of previous semesters. People have been using the CBDB portion of the name and then their last name. So this is another thing where this can be all fake or it could be real. You could set it up right now as fake and change it later to use it for real. You could set it up fake and just never do it for real. Or you can set it up for real and then use it as is. Um, app SKU, don't worry about that. App Category. So looking at all of the possibilities here, what kind of app are we creating? <clears throat> Lifestyle could make sense, but maybe books and comics over here. So it's a comic-related app. It could be about lifestyle, you know, hobbies. I don't think there's a hobby one, right? So lifestyle. I'm gonna, there's no wrong answer here, and these things can be changed. But the point of choosing a category is that for your discoverability. If people are interested in apps about books, and they're browsing those kinds of apps, they may find your app. If they're searching for these kinds of apps, and your app is in this section, yours might also be listed. We'll go with books and comics. When I created my account, there was a spot for customer support email, and website and stuff, and I skipped it when I created my account. But now, when we actually create the app, I have to have some of these filled in uh, for the app customer support email address. For the purposes of the assignment and the class, again, this can be fake. I'm going to do help at victor.biz. That's not a real address at all. It will accept it. But obviously, if this were a real app and you wanted real downloads and real customers and such, you would want, you would want these things filled in. You can easily go create, you know, help Victor apps at gmail.com. That's fine. But it's more professional to actually have your email as part of like a domain uh, of your business. You can easily get a free Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, and all of that. But what is professional and not free is having one with your domain name. So I'll mention recommendation. Get a domain name and email for yourself. It's not free, so the price ranges. It's really, really big from 20 to like $80 per year. And if I'm like starting off and I don't have a lot of funds, okay, well, that's a lot to spend on. But if you, um, you know, do well with these apps and sell them and make money it's an investment in the business so my recommendation is to have so professional is you know help at uh, victor.com not professional is victor apps at gmail.com any of these free accounts that's not professional even if you've seen it on people's real business cards that's not professional because if they couldn't afford to buy a real domain name, that might be an indicator of other things that are not as professional in the business. Customer support phone and website. I can skip these at the moment. Um, but here, again, I can, I can make it up or I can skip it. But what you could do, have you heard of Google Voice? For phone numbers, get a Google Voice number, which is voice.google.com. 
you can get a free phone number from Google that connects to your current phone number. So you have a Google Voice number that you put on a business card or your account here, and people can call that number, and you can have it set to go automatically to voicemail. So people will call that other number, it goes to voicemail, and then at your leisure, you answer the voicemail and reply through that phone number, and then it's much more professional than giving away your personal cell phone number. then again their website you can get free websites but I wouldn't bother with them because sometimes they're slow they don't have many features and there was a really famous free website domain out there that got hacked and then all of their customer information was stolen of course so this is another example about paying to get a little bit more professional I'm going to save that. At the top here, I've got the name of my app, various features such as testing it, what are the reviews of my app, uh, putting ads into the app, and so forth. Some ways to get rich from your apps. One way is upfront purchase. So pay 99 cents now and then they download it you get 99 cents. Actually even though the account from Amazon that we're all setting up here is free, Amazon does take a percentage of the cost of your app. All the app <laughs> stores do that. Google, Apple, Amazon, Windows, or Microsoft, they all take around 30% of the value of your app. So if you're selling your app for a dollar, you'll get approximately 70 cents um, from, your, from your app sale, because they take the 30% for you know, the server infrastructure and all of that. Another way is in-app purchases. free to download then features cost money you see this so much in games you buy a game you play it for a while and then you need more weapons or different skins or characters and such and you pay 99 cents or five dollars or whatever and you want more features it's a little bit here a little bit there a little bit there and suddenly you paid a lot for that free game so that's the same thing here that we can do for our apps the initial download is free and then subsequent features are paid. We also have ads, run ads, advertisements in your app. If people click the ad, you make money. Question? Yes, that's a good point because if you <clears throat> you saw oops, you saw over here mobile ads. They have this whole system and they give you the code to plug into your app and then ads will appear. There's different kinds of apps. Ads that will pop up on the screen and then the person has to click yes or no or whatever. But there's other apps that might pop up at the bottom or the top. And yes, you have to build into your app. Well, I'm going to have an ad that's going to take 10 pixels. So I don't want to put anything down at the bottom of my of my app 10 pixels or it'll get covered. So yeah, you have to take that into account depending on the kind of app that you're the kind of ad that you're doing, it will affect the interface of your app. But you don't have to code that other than just saying there's 10 pixels you don't have to code any JavaScript for it. No, nope. they give you the code basically and then you plug it into your app and then your app will show ads. Yeah. So those are the main ways you can make money off of your app. Uh, for the moment, we're not going to set up any monetization. Uh, you can do that if you'd like. You need to read the do their documentation, how to set it up. But those are those couple of ways.
you can create your app and set it right now for free and then later on turn it to pay or, or vice versa but I think there's a limit um, if you start I think if you start with pay and turn it free I think you can do that but I think if you start with free and turn it into pay I think it won't let you do that I have to confirm those are a couple ways to make money sell it before the download uh, extra features are are a cost or run ads now we need to get six tasks accomplished before our app is uploadable <coughs> before our app is published that is and compared to all of the other weeks of effort that we've done to make the app to publish the app is not that complex it's getting all of these check marks and then our app is published for the purposes of the class for the final grade you at least have to have it ready to be published because there's that submit button you don't have to fully publish it to the world if you're not comfortable with that but when we further talk through the lecture for the final grade I will need to see that all of these check marks are free if there's any yellow or red the app is not ready to publish you won't get the best grade so you won't have to actually submit it to the world but let's look through all of these screens about what's required the general info should be filled in no problem it's the name of the app and all this other stuff about your category your customer contact info if you need to change any of this there's an edit button at the bottom the second tab availability and pricing where would you like your app to be available in all countries and regions where Amazon sells <laughs> only in these countries if you turn that one on then you can select to, to sell in certain territories and countries and everything so whatever you feel is a good option here is fine sell it everywhere or only certain places but see the value of that if you've created an app in Spanish you might only want to sell it in Spanish speaking countries you can do that is this free or paid so for free or, or paid if you want to do it paid this is gonna be 99 cents it will then automatically put it into these various currencies Oops, not 99 dollars, 99 cents. Zero dot 99. There we go. So for 99 cents, then in England, it'll be 78 pounds or 87 euros. Or what else do we have here? 110 yen, a dollar 43 Canadian. So I'm going to keep it free. Question? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's if it changes on a regular basis or if it's set now and it doesn't. It probably does change, but I don't know what it is. We'd have to check over here in their documentation under the uh, support or docs. We'd get that answer. When will you publish your app? So. If we leave it blank, as soon as we click Submit, after they approve the app, it'll be available. If instead we want to do it on a certain launch day, I want to do it on, you know, the September 1st, whatever, at 1 in the morning, you can set that. I'm going to leave it blank, meaning as soon as it's approved, it will be public. And that reminds me over here, Apple versus Google extensive pre-screening process for apps Apple will check your app make sure it doesn't have viruses make sure it works properly make sure it doesn't violate their terms and then if it's all good then your app will be available for for download over at Google Play apps get published easily but may be reported 
Whereas Apple is more of like a bouncer before you get in. We need to check it out, and you can't get in until we check it out. Google is like, everyone come on in. And then you're causing trouble, get out. Amazon is kind of in the middle. Not as extensive pre-screening. but easily published. In the, in the five years that I've taught this class, you know, hundreds of students have come through it. It's been like three students that have had a problem publishing their app via Amazon. Um, so easily published. So that's what I said. When would you like to publish your app? Leave it blank because when you click submit after they check it quickly, then it'll be available pretty fast. Usually at the most 24 hours. Usually when I teach the class, we do this on a Tuesday. If people go all the way and publish it and come back on a Thursday, your app is ready for the world to see. So usually pretty fast. So I'll save that. I didn't even change anything really, and then I've got my second check mark. <clears throat> Two out of six. Description. So I'll be looking at this screen, but it's pretty straightforward. Display name is the name of your app in an Amazon listing. Because whenever you look at, at Amazon and you're looking at games, Right, there's these games. It's going to have a picture and all of this, which we'll see, and then various descriptions and such. So what this screen is all about is that, that marketing, that self-promotion, convincing people, download my app. So the name of the app, it's just going to be your last name, CBDB, that's fine. Short description, up to 1,200 characters. Um, very briefly what the app does so uh, at the minimum something like uh, store your comic book collection I'm not really gonna look for anything amazing and poetic in all of these boxes but I will look for you to have put some effort into describing the app and filling in these boxes this is up to 1200 characters um, what I wrote here is completely minimal. This would be a nice C plus. Uh, we'll say C minus. Um, if you were to submit that, because you have a little bit more space to describe the app a little bit more, and then even longer over here under the long description. So we could say something like CBDB is the best app for you to store your comic collection because, and then you fill in the rest. You don't have to do it now, but for the final assessment, I'll be looking at these screens. Bullet points, up to 10 features about why our app is great. So tell me a couple, what, what things does our app do? Create a user account. Right, that whole login, logout system is for creating user accounts. Okay, what else does our app do? Save and delete comic books. And so forth. You want to put a few of those. I think, does it say maximum of 10? Okay, so you can write there, scan barcodes snap photos, whatever, I'll put a couple. Notice the red uh, star, that's going to be a required field. There is a non-required field right here. But if you really wanted people to find your app, you would fill this in. Keywords of what people may be searching for. Search terms used to increase the discoverability of your app. Use a comma or white space to separate your terms. So if I'm saying something like comics, Marvel, DC, Spider-Man, 
um, I don't know, just putting a bunch of types of keywords of what people may be searching for. Collection, storing, you know, various keywords that might that I might think people might use to find this kind of app. And all that we're doing here and in another screen is related to sort of SEO. If you've taken my other classes, I teach a lot of other classes also about social media, search engine optimization, building websites, all of that stuff is marketing and promotion. Let's say you took my website class, you make a website and it's amazing, but you get no traffic because no one knows you exist. You haven't done promotion, you haven't done SEO, you haven't done social media, you haven't done Twitter, etc. No one goes to the website. Similar with apps. You might have made an amazing app. No one knows about it. You need to promote it on, on, on uh, Facebook or Reddit or do SEO or fill this stuff in to help you get found. So some content like this is enough. Be careful here. We have add localized description. I'm glad they changed that. They used to say something else that was confusing. Your save. You want to click save, not the add localized description. What that will do is it'll give you another set of boxes for you to write the same description in another language. So if I also wanted my app to be downloaded in Israel or Japan uh, or Brazil, I could add a uh, you know uh, Brazilian Portuguese language version of it, a Mexican Spanish version of it. A Japanese version of it under localized. I'm only going to bother with it in English, so just save. Okay, three out of six. We are we have three sixths complete. Uh, I'm going to skip images and multimedia for a moment. We'll go to content rating. You need to fill in all of these to say what your app does or does not have, and they're both pretty straightforward. Or they're all pretty straightforward, so going through it. Does our app have violence? None, moderate, or strong? Nope. The app itself doesn't contain that. Cartoon violence? Nope. Drugs? Nope. Nudity? Nope. Sex? Nope. Intolerance? Nope. Profanity? Nope. Academic? Is it academic? Is this for educational purposes? No, it's not really teaching you anything. It's not really school related, so no. Additional info, account creation or other personal information collected? Yes or no? Yeah, a person creates an account. They submit their email and a password to create an account. That is account creation, so yeah. Are there advertisements in our app? At the moment, no. We, we didn't add the the revenue collection system of mobile ads, so no, but if I do put ads into it, I would have to put yes. Is our app directed at kids under, 18, uh, under 13? Maybe, you know, comics are for all ages, I guess, but, you know, focused on kids, yes or no. Whatever one of these is fine, although if you, if you do uh, select yes, uh, you also have to add, for example, privacy policy and such about collecting information. I'll put no. Is there any gambling? No. Location detection? No. We didn't access any GPS features in our app at the moment. If later on we added GPS features, <coughs> like to <coughs> show you on a map different comic shops, then I would add that feature. User-generated content or user-to-user -user communication? Yes, the person is submitting a photo of the comic or typing in the name of it. That's the user is creating that, generating it, so yes. Because we had number one and number six said to, set to yes, we're going to be required to also add a privacy policy because especially for account creation we have to provide the information how are we using the personal information you're providing for the moment and for the class this can be made up fake slash privacy 
But if it were a real app that you want to do in the future eventually, you want to have some sort of link to some online resource that spells out how does your app use people's information. And I've never done that before, so I don't even know where to begin. Sure you do. You look it up. You look up um, privacy policy generator or template <coughs> privacy policy generator for apps. So there's for bloggers and WordPress and all of that, Etsy. So you just look it up. Um, help me generate a privacy policy and then it'll walk you through. Do you do this? Do you do that? It'll make you some text. You still have to upload it somewhere because this requires a link somewhere. Uh, so you could go actually, you can get a free OK website over at WordPress.com. You can get something like victorapps.wordpress.com and then your privacy policy. You can get a free website at WordPress.com for that info. Save that. Four out of six. And then APK files. Let me uh, let's look at it here first. APK file. Upload your APK file one by one. So you can click here to open a window, or just drop your APK file. If you were able to generate it properly in Visual Studio, remember you end up with a whatever dot release dot apk file. The last version of my app was 99.99 .99 megabytes on my flash drive. The actual apk file, the final released version of it, compressed and everything, is 3 megabytes. So very, very efficient. I'm going to drop that in and upload it. It's going to scan it. It's going to look at the at the various aspects of the project. Version code one. This is will be supported on over 189 different apps. Then when you, uh, if you're curious, you can click on that little info icon. In our config XML file, I type version code 1. And the last time that I edited the XML file was back last month. I changed my version code 1.1.2018.07.12. That's not wrong or anything, but that's, remember what I was telling you, that when we edit our config XML file, in these various screens, like the common screen, this unique ID number. If I upload right now campos.camposcbdb and you try to do it without changing it, it'll reject yours because I've already claimed that unique ID. And then my build number and all of this, it's arbitrary, but if you'd like it to be relevant, you want to put the latest date. You'd have to re-upload it. So only one app can be uploaded to the Amazon App Store with that package. If yours is exactly the same as mine, you will need to upload your version with your name. So various features, permissions, right? We, we use the camera to take photos. We're, we're saving stuff in the database, etc. This is informational. Add other details here. What language is it, is it for? The default is English, so if you're targeting English, 
optional testing instructions give the Amazon testing team instructions about how to test your app not really necessary at all but you could is a required check mark right here I certify this app may be imported to and exported from the US and all other countries etc etc and this is talking about encryption um, you know um, <clears throat> Complex encryption is a weapons level thing, and you can't export it and import it out of the US. Ours is not that, but you have to certify that you are aware of that. And then if your app uses any maps, Google Maps, Amazon will kind of convert it for you to Amazon Maps. Ours doesn't, doesn't matter, it's not required, but I'll just leave it on and save. All right, five out of six. Question. <coughs> In your special case, uh, I'm not actually going to upload mine, so <clears throat> you can take the name. Um, okay, then the last thing for me to do here, for us to do here, six out of six, will be images and multimedia. There's a lot here, but it's not that complex, but in general, we have to upload various icons and screenshots of our app to sort of preview it. Notice on a, well I closed it, but notice on a on an existing app what it shows. What's the name of the app? Who's the developer? An icon for it then screenshots you know graphics that are join the pork side graphics that are um, showing off your app and why you might get it my why you might want it to be downloaded so that's what it's asking for here what's the icon that is going to promote your image a 512 by 512 size a 114 by 114 size. What are screenshots? How do you want to show it off? It, it's not literally, you can do it in this terms about it. It could be actual, you know, shots of your app on a phone. People do that sometimes. You can go like this. You can search for, you know, Android uh, Pixel template graphic. I'm just saying, not that one, but. You know, you can find that. That's a generic enough looking Android device. I can download that and then in Photoshop make a make a a, a mock-up or a graphic of my app. I can borrow this one and using Photoshop I can put my app into it. I can do the example of what Angry Birds did and it's it's you know some fun graphics. Maybe it's showing a level and then it's showing some text or it's showing a kind of an image like this as a sort of a banner image preview. So between 3 and 10 PNGs or JPEGs of these sizes, portrait or landscape. These two are required. This one is optional. 1024 by 500, landscape only, ping or JPEG another sort of promotional image and the best way to figure out what to do is go look at examples of, of apps that do exist um, uh, do we have Fortnite here so let's see what we see on this one okay graphic here and that one this is obviously someone just trying to rip off Fortnite players because it doesn't look real uh, all these at one star. Yep, there's a lot of fake Fortnite games out there. But uh, you can um, let's see. That's what that's got some good ratings. 
how did they do this one? So they did their, their graphic like that. Number one guide for Victory Royale. Uh, then this one has, that looks like an iPhone, and yet they're selling it on the uh, Android App Store. Okay. But anyway, it's the phone, and then it's screenshots of what their game is. and then their banner image. So that's what's being asked for in this screen. And then also completely optional, a video that shows some gameplay, some footage, a video. You know, I could, if I have the app on the device, I could very low tech record myself using the app. And that's a video that I could upload. The only requirements are gonna be the icon, and the screenshots. That'll give me six out of six. Once you get all six of those, your icon to submit will, will be active. You will be able to submit. You're not going to be required to submit it for real in the class, but I will go through and make sure you've got all green check marks. So when that's done, we submit it, we'll have an app really available for people to then to start to download and all of that. What I plan on is that today we're going to have lab time for you to start to create these assets for you to start to create these icons and screenshots and such so that you can get to the point to publish it. If you would like to today, then you, you fill out all of these things and then go for it. Go for the submit. You'll get some emails that say your app's been submitted, we're reviewing it, and usually within less than 24 hours, you get an email saying congratulations, your app is available. And then your app is out there for real for people to actually see and download and such. On Thursday, we're going to add a few more features to our app to then release a version 2, um, and then the app, and then the semester, and the app will be done. Um, so that's what we're going to focus on the rest of the day. Uh, on your own, you will attempt to create these assets, the, the text, the description, these graphics, based on your creativity, based on the requirements here. And when we come back then on Thursday, it's going to be the final coding, the final publication, and the potluck. Questions on what we've talked about today, because you're going to need to practice doing the deployment, right, all of this publishing and all of that. If you change your app, you're going to need to do some of these things again. <clears throat> That's why I'm going to do some lab time for you to practice all that we've done here. But questions at this point? OK, so we'll do some lab time. You can take a break whenever you want and work on the final screen here. Question? <clears throat> The final day to uh, check that everything's done is going to be on Thursday, because we're going to do one more little piece of coding. Yeah, part three of the class is, com is, com is extremely short. It's just these two weeks, these, um, these four class meetings of 16 hours, so Thursday. At the end of the day, or through at any point on Thursday, but most likely at the end of the day, uh, that's when the assessment will be, once we're done with the final lecture. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're going to show me um, your app um, basically on the device, but more importantly, I'm going to look at your account on Amazon to make sure all this is done, and I'll go through it and we'll talk about it, and that's the assessment to make sure it's it's all there and, and ready. For the Amazon apps, yeah, yeah. These are apps that uh, you can download to a real phone. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I'll help you in a moment. Okay, so we'll, uh, that's it. Then we'll do some lab time, and uh, if you need any help, call me over. If you want to make sure you're on track, check with me.